So here's the thing. Marvel became what it is in the 60s during what is known as the Marvel Age, a period when iconic heroes were created such as the Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, the X-Men, the Avengers, etc. But aside from the heroes we've come to love, there were a ton of villains made during this period. Sure, the Marvel Age gave us iconic villains like Doctor Doom, Green Goblin, Magneto, and Loki, but there were also plenty of obscure villains during this time, some of whom Stan Lee and co. seemed to copy and paste with slight alterations. During a period when I read a lot of these comics, I caught on to a lot of the tropes used for these types of villains and decided to list them all under different archetypes. The ones I boiled down to are communists, masters of disguise, or shapeshifters, mind controllers, alien invaders, etc, etc. The only archetype I want to focus on for now are alien invaders, considering science fiction is what defined the Silver Age of comics after all. The first of these invaders to appear in Marvel's hero canon were the popular Skrulls, who debuted in Fantastic Four number 2. So the Skrull Empire sends a group of their agents to disguise themselves as the Fantastic Four as a means of framing them to keep the only known heroes at the time from interfering with their plans. Eventually, the FF escape and take out the imposters, posing as them to their leaders on a nearby mothership. There, Mr. Fantastic convinces them that Earth is too dangerous by showing them some of Marvel's anthology comics containing images of monsters and other fantastical malarkey to scare them off. As for most of the Skrull imposters, one managed to escape somehow. Reed sways them to turn into cows and hypnotize them to believe they are cows. These were comics made in the 60s. Don't ask me about the ethical hoopla. I just read what I read. Next, we have the Toadmen from Incredible Hulk number 2. These intergalactic croakers had advanced magnetic tech dubbing themselves Masters of Magnetism. Keep in mind, this was around a year before the real Master appears. I'll give these toads this. Their tech really does stick it to the laws of physics, considering how it's advanced enough to be able to locate smart minds like Bruce Banner, whom they kidnap in order to learn about Earth's tech. A slight issue with that, though, is that Bruce Banner is actually the Hulk, who is eventually unleashed and pummels these slippy toad wannabes, allowing the Hulk the opportunity to escape. This, however, does not stop them from being able to broadcast their ultimatum to mankind, threatening to crash the moon to Earth unless the Earth surrenders to them. Thankfully, they're thwarted by Bruce Banner when he gets a hold of a gamma gun he had stored at a secret base, firing at the alien armada and instead of destroying them, knocking him into deep space. This had something to do with like Stan assuming that when gamma beings make contact with their magnetic propulsions, it would cause a kickback that would hurl them backwards. Guess it was just keeping our hero from having to kill them on the spot. But I digress. Now we'll move to the Stone Men of Saturn from Journey into Mystery number 83 the first appearance of Thor. These alien rocks are members of Korg's race, with one of them canonically being Korg, according to some encyclopedia released after Korg first appeared in Planet Hulk. So the story consists of these space golems scouting Norway to prepare for an invasion. Their armada proves to be business when they project a large image of a dragon to scare away jet fighters and have force fields that protect them from missiles. Eventually Thor comes in to save the day, overcoming the stone man's giant cage, disintegration beams, and robot monsters, leading them to get cold feet and cancel their invasion. Continuing through Journey into Mystery, we move to issue 90, where Thor battles some scrawl knockoffs, the carbon copy men. So how the story goes is that a few of their warlords up and decide to conquer Earth. Through whatever logic, their plan consists of one of their own impersonating New York City's mayor in order to cause mayhem through the legal system. Like cars driving on sidewalks and the Brooklyn bitch being painted with polka dots. In his quest to figure out what's causing this madness, Thor eventually comes across their ship gets captured, beats their leader's ass, then tosses him into deep space, leading the fleet to go and rescue their leader, and thus saving the day. As for any of the remaining carbon copy men, Thor convinces them to turn into trees. And considering what they copy is replicated even at neurological levels, plus considering trees don't have brains, these carbon copy men are thus fated to live as trees since they can't think to turn back. Again, comics were freaking weird back then. Now we move on to the next set of invaders who appear in Tales of Suspense number 40, Iron Man's second appearance. In this story, the aliens are in the spotlight, rather their giant robotic caveman Gargantus takes center stage. So here's their dumb plan to conquer Earth. These aliens assume that because their ancestors visited Earth 80,000 years ago and discovered cavemen, they assume cavemen would still populate the Earth up to the present, leading them to build a super caveman to rule over the other cavemen. Don't get me wrong, 
Gargantus was effective enough to take over a whole town and force the residents to submit to him through his hypnosis tech, at least until Iron Man destroys him. However, with the abundance of advanced aliens that came before and after them, they look like utter buffoon. Like seriously? It never occurred to y'all that a dominant species will evolve to replace the cavemen, that in the 80,000 years that have passed since your ancestors visited, that Earth would not be able to advance in that period of time. It really seemed like Stan put little thought into developing these aliens, because not only is their plan crap, but they also are never named, and they never appear in a future Marvel comic, at least up to this point. They'll only be remembered for the corny concept of using a gigantic robotic caveman to try to conquer Earth. But whatever, it's comic books after all. Moving on to the next invaders, we have the A. Chilterians in Tales to Astonish number 46. These guys essentially copy what the last invaders do by using a giant robot in their mission. The only difference being is that their robot replicates a cyclops and they have a bigger presence in the story. Their plan involved having their robot kidnap fishermen and sailors to study Earth's inhabitants, which catches the attention of Ant-Man and the Wasp who happen to be vacationing nearby. They are soon beaten when Ant-Man rewires their mechanical behemoth from the inside to turn on its masters, scaring them away and concluding that Earth is too dangerous to conquer. So before I move on, here's a weird fact. Kraglin from the Guardians of the Galaxy films, he's canonically a member of this race. Here's even a picture of what he looks like. You're welcome. The last invaders I want to talk about are the Quiga from Daredevil number 28. To basically get to the point, their mission involved them trying to blind Earth's inhabitants in order for them to conquer with ease. However, with the Man Without Fear already being blind, he was able to take him out pretty quickly. So that covers one of the villain archetypes from the Marvel Age. You know what sound interesting? A story that revisits how often invaders appear during this time. Maybe have each member from each group meet one another in a public place in space. Perhaps they're sharing stories or decide to team up and have their people work together to come back with a vengeance. Just some ideas to spitball, you know. Who knows, some of these aliens get further development down the line, like the Skrulls and even the Stone Men. I even learned through the Marvel Wiki that even the most obscure characters and groups get another chance to appear, even if it is decades later. Did you like this video? Enjoy what I shared today? Let me know in the comments below. Peace out.